Social media has led to an explosion of information and ideas, but it hasn't always been good. It has allowed people from relative obscurity to become some of the most popular and famous people on the planet. And therein lies the problem. In this video, I will take a deep dive into the birth of social media and its impact on the life and culture as the way we see it. Zsa, Zsa Gabor and how she inspired many modern day influencers, the Kardashian story and the problem that comes with fame. So fasten your seatbelts. Andy Warhol, in case you didn't know, was the founder of the pop art movement in the United States. Andy Warhol was not technically trained as a fine artist, which may surprise you. In 1949, he graduated from Carnegie Institute of Technology with a degree in pictorial design, which is now known as illustration. He came to New York City after college to pursue his dream of becoming a commercial artist. His first work was published in Glamour magazine the same year, and he was met with immediate success. He went on to become an award-winning illustrator and one of the most successful in the advertising industry during the next decade. He switched his attention to painting after reaching the business success he had always desired. The premiere of his iconic Campbell Soup Can series in LA transformed him into an overnight sensation in Hollywood, causing controversy and outrage from the art world, all within a few years. Later, he built The Factory, a studio where he mass-produced his artwork in order to make a statement to his detractors. I want you to think of pop art in terms of Web 2.0 because that will help you understand how Andy Warhol foresaw social media. Pop art, as the name implies, is influenced by and inspired by people, places, objects, and events in popular culture. Another feature of pop art is the manner in which it is created. Painting on canvas or chiseling stone are examples of traditional art, but commercial art techniques such as silk screening are utilized in pop art. In his sculptures, Warhol, for example, incorporated cardboard boxes and package design components. Pop artists were able to mass produce work in an assembly line fashion using commercial art techniques, making their work affordable and accessible to the general public. And obviously Andy Warhol's work right now is clearly not affordable, it's worth millions and millions. You might expect to pay thousands of dollars for a relatively unknown artist and millions of dollars for a well-known works of art if you want to possess traditional artwork. To make money, the pop artist would sell the same print multiple times. I guess in that sense, Andy Warhol was smart because he was just pumping out different versions of the same print so he can make multiples. The artist would not profit if a piece of art was unpopular and just a few copies were sold. What is it about social media that makes it such a powerful medium? You only need an internet connection to participate in social media and you may upload blogs, images or videos that could be seen by hundreds if not millions of people around the world. Similar to how pop art is mass produced and made available for public consumption, social media makes it simple to create and share with anybody and everyone. And that's only the start. Anyone can self-publish books, launch a YouTube channel, print artwork or clothing, and create apps for fun or profit. Long before Paris Hilton first uttered a breathy that's hot or Kim Kardashian sashayed down a red carpet flashing her curves, there was Zsa, Zsa Gabor. Zsa, Zsa Gabor invented the method of becoming famous just for the sake of being famous, which had been imitated by generations of shady actresses since. She built a career on several marriages, ostentatious wealth, and excessive expertise about the opposite sex and the good life. And she was an open book. Despite this, there was an aura of exotic mystery about her, probably due to her accent, glamour, secrecy about her true age, and insistence on always looking flawlessly put together. If there was a real Zsa, Zsa she was never known to the rest of the world. She was more of a dazzling blonde concept than a real person. 
Gabor enthralled the public for more than half a century. Despite a mediocre film career and the lack of a big TV series like her sister Ava the Green Acres star. For the general public and sociologist, Zsa, Zsa Gabor was the apparent fulfillment of the book The Brave New World's Mindless Future, a creation made possible by mass electronic media, her words and image transcribed and beamed into theaters and living rooms on the internet and newsstand shelves and at supermarket checkout lines. It's actually disturbing all the things in that book that are true today, even the book 1984, but that's like a whole nother video. Zsa, Zsa was involved in two major scandals in the 20th century, the death of Anna Nicole Smith, Von Anhalt claimed to had a romance with her, and Bernie Madoff's alleged financial scheme. A lawyer claimed she may have lost 10 million through him, and she was in the spotlight for a squabble known as the slap heard around the world. This game has been played for ages by wealthy young layabouts. Since they wore the most flashy type of toga, celebrities have been asked, what exactly do you do? Bo Brummel, the Regency Rake, is an excellent example of this. Born in 1778, the former soldier rose to prominence at the turn of the century by wearing his tie in a certain way and experimenting with odd headgear and designs. It was enough to be friends with the notoriously incompetent Prince Regent to earn him access into society. The concept of the dandy is derived from Brummel and his followers. Nicole Rich she and Katie Price, on the other hand, appear to be industrial fountains. Zsa, Zsa was in many respects the first Kim Kardashian, someone who thrived for the tabloids, TV cameras, and the jealous yet approving gaze of the masses as she devoured her jet set antics and relationships with her ceaseless banter and attractiveness. Being famous for the sake of being famous is nothing new. Andy Warhol was spinning exaggerations about his own time and ours when he said that in the future, everyone would be famous for 15 minutes. That is where the Kardashians come in as a perfect example as they capitalized on things and shot to fame almost overnight, it seems. Kim Kardashian in that sense is extremely similar to Jean Gabor. She is famous for being famous and she is famous for simply existing. It obviously makes her extremely rich and it has turned into a virtuous cycle for her. Kim Kardashian started working at Body, a local clothing boutique in Encino, California when she was 16 years old. Her car had been totaled and before her father agreed to buy her a new one, he required that she be responsible for any future damages. Kim Kardashian spent four years at Body where she helped open the Calabasas facility she quit in 2000 after her first marriage. By 2003, Kim Kardashian was working as a personal stylist for Brandy, Ray J's sister, an R&B singer and actress. Sonia Norwood, the brother's mother and manager, claimed that in 2004, she gave Kim Kardashian permission to use her American Express credit card for one and only one purchase. Norwood, on the other hand, claimed that Kardashian and her sisters, Chloe and Courtney, had allegedly made over $120,000 in unauthorized charges, the majority of which was attributed to purchases made at the Kardashian family-owned boutique in 2006 and 2007 after the Kardashians had stopped working for Brandy. Norwood claimed that she did not press criminal charges at her children's request and instead delivered her findings to Kardashian, who supposedly apologized and pledged to reimburse the bill. Norwood launched a legal complaint in 2008 after no attempts to reimburse her were made. All of the charges had been refuted by Kardashian. The lawsuit was dismissed in 2009 after the parties made an undisclosed settlement. And I guess the scamming starts there. Around 2003, Kim Kardashian began working as a stylist and assistant for socialite and childhood friend Paris Hilton, appearing in many episodes of Hilton and Nicole Richie's reality show, The Simple Life. In 2005, Shiraz Hazan, a Hilton PR strategist, met Kardashian and her mother, Kris Jenner. In an interview with 2020, Hassan indicated that Kardashian was willing to do whatever it takes to build a great 
business. Kardashian and her two sisters founded the boutique Dash, which was in Calabasas, California in 2006 as their first business venture. A sex tape film by Kardashian and Ray J in 2002 was released in February 2007. Kardashian sued Vivid Entertainment, which distributed the film under the title Kim Kardashian Superstar. Vivid was able to distribute the footage when she abandoned the lawsuit and settled for a rumored $5 million. Following the release of the sex tape, some media sites chastised Kim and her family for using it as a PR gimmick to promote their upcoming reality show. And I firmly do believe that this definitely was a PR gimmick. Kardashian, her mother, Kris Jenner, her stepmother, Caitlyn Jenner, her siblings, Kourtney, Chloe, and Rob Kardashian, and half-sisters, Kendall and Kylie Jenner, first appeared on the reality television show Keeping Up with the Kardashians in October 2007. Kourtney and Kim Take New York and Kourtney and Kim Take Miami were created as spin-offs of the series, which proved to be a hit for E! After 294 episodes, the flagship series came to an end in 2021, but obviously it went on Hulu after that. Kim discussed an offer from Playboy to pose nude in the magazine in one of the episodes. Kardashian posed for Playboy in a nude photo shoot in December of that year. In 2010, Kardashian signed many new endorsement deals, including one with Carl's Jr. to endorse various food brands. Kardashian drew outrage in April when she photographed a cat while holding it by the scuff of its neck. Kardashian is working in the retail and fashion industries with her sisters, Courtney and Chloe. They have released a number of clothing lines as well as fragrances. PETA, an animal rights organization, slammed Kardashian for wearing a fur jacket so often that she was named one of the five worst people or organizations for animal welfare in 2010. And it's true, there's like so many photos of her in these like obscene fur coats. On the season three, premiere episode of 90210 in June, Kardashian guest starred alongside Chloe and Courtney as herself. According to the International Business Times, Kardashian's earnings in 2010 were the highest among Hollywood's reality stars, estimated at $6 million. Kim is credited by the family and the media with assisting them in launching their careers. The family has been chastised for being renowned solely for their sake of being famous for being famous. Forbes published an inquiry into Kylie's finances in late May 2020, saying that she exaggerated her billionaire status. Kim Kardashian was photographed by Paul Jean Goudet for the cover of the pictorial in Paper's Winter 2014 edition. Her naked butt is displayed on the cover above the tagline, Break the Internet which drew a lot of attention on social media and traditional media. Unlike previous celebrity nudes, which represented women's rebellion against oppressive society and patriarchy, according to a Time Magazine writer, Kardashian's exhibition was just provocation and bluster, repeated images that seem to offer us some sort of truth or insight, but are really just self-serving. We want there to be something more, some reason or context, some great explanation that tells us what it is like to live in this very day and age, but there is not. Kim Kardashian's ass is nothing but an empty promise. The PR stunt, however, established a new standard in terms of social media response, with Paper's website receiving 15.9 million views in one day, compared to its 25,000 a day usual hit. So you can clearly see that she knows how to grab people's attention, hence why she wore Marilyn Monroe's dress. Let's be honest, everyone knows. Kardashian released Kim Kardashian Hollywood, a mobile game for iPhone and Android in June 2014. The game's goal is for you to become a Hollywood star or starlet. The game follows a free-to-play format, which means that it is free to download but requires payment for in-game things. The game was a smash hit, grossing $1.6 million in its first five days. The game's developer, Glue Mobile, claimed in July that the game was the fifth most successful in Apple's App Store. Kim Kardashian published her portfolio book, Selfish, 
a 325 page collection of self taken images in May 2015. Kardashian released Kimoji, an emoji set for iOS devices in December 2015. The software was a hit and it was among the top five most downloaded apps that week. Kardashian was on the cover model of Vogue Spain in August 2015. According to CBC Marketplace and celebrity endorsement experts, Kim Kardashian was paid between $75,000 and $300,000 for each Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter post she made endorsing beauty products such as waist trainers and teeth whiteners, as well as Coca-Cola and well-known charities as of November 2016. Experts believe that celebrities created glimpses into their lives to entice viewers to fall for their commercial pitches. According to experts, these phony glances into their lives are curated to appear as if the viewer is catching them in a spontaneous moment when they are actually just contrived, and I'm sure Kim doesn't use any of these products. I think she's like a sponsor for now for Beyond Meat or something, which like really is she even a vegetarian? Okay. When it comes to her relationships, Kim K is no short of famous flames. Basically, it's a Kardashian curse. Kardashian became engaged to NBA player Chris Humphreys, who was then a member of the New Jersey Nets in May 2011, after dating him since October 2010. On August 20th, they were married in a wedding ceremony in Montecito, California. She had introduced her wedding fragrance, Kim Kardashian Love, earlier that month to coincide with her own wedding. In early October 2011, E! aired a two-part TV special about the wedding preparations and the actual wedding as part of of what the Washington Post called a media blitz around the event. Kim filed for divorce from Chris Humphreys on October 31st after only 72 days of marriage, alleging irreconcilable differences. Several news agencies speculated that Kim Kardashian's marriage to Humphreys was largely a publicity hoax designed to boost the Kardashian family's brand and subsequent television projects. Jonathan Jackson, a man claiming to be her former publicist, also stated that her short-lived marriage was a manufactured and a ruse to make money. Kardashian sued Jackson, claiming that his charges were false and the case was eventually settled with an apology from Jackson. Following the breakup, a widely circulated petition for the cancellation of the Kardashians related content was circulated. The divorce received a lot of media attention. While still legally married to Humphreys, Kardashian began dating a rapper and longtime friend Kanye West in April 2012. Kardashian and West became engaged on October 21st, Kim Kardashian's 33rd birthday, then married on May 24th, 2014 in Florence, Italy. After her divorce was finalized on June 3rd, 2013, Ricardo Tiski of Givenchy designed her wedding gown, while Michael Costello designed the outfits for some of her guests. The couple's high profile and various jobs have resulted in extensive media coverage of their relationship. The New York Times dubbed their union a historic blessing lizard of celebrity. And I definitely think she used Kanye in my opinion. CNN reported in January 2021 that the pair were considering a divorce and Kardashian filed for divorce on February 19th, 2021. I guess she got her kids, she got what she wanted, she got her fame. Though all of these high profile connections and incredible TV deals, it is no surprise that Kim Kardashian is also extremely wealthy. She has managed to leverage her 15 seconds of fame, according to Andy Warhol into an effective empire. Kardashian's net worth was estimated to be 45 million in May 2014. Forbes said in 2015 that she earned more this year than ever before, nearly doubling her profits to 53 million from 28 million in 2014, and she had monetized fame better than anybody else. The Kardashian collection, which brought in 600 million in 2013, and the Kardashian beauty branded tanning products, the boutique line Dash, as well as sponsored social media posts worth 300,000 to 500,000 per post, account for a large portion of her revenue. Kardashian had a net worth of 350 million US as of July 2018. Neither of Kardashian's first two marriages resulted in alimony payments. Kardashian's net worth was projected to be $1 billion by Forbes in April 6, 2021. Yet, 
all is not rosy in the world of glitz and glamour. There are a lot of problems that come up with fame. For the most part, the world isn't friendly to the famous for very long. The rationale is simple. Each individual's triumph results in the humiliation of many others. The celebrity of a few people will always be starkly contrasted with the suppression of many others. People get irritated by celebrities. The resentment can be kept under control for a while, but it never sleeps for long. When we think about celebrities, we forget that it's closely linked to being overly conspicuous in some people's eyes, annoying them excessively, and to becoming the plausible reason for their humiliation, a sign of how the world has treated them unfairly. In my opinion, sometimes some of these people kind of do deserve to be treated unfairly, but whatever. For example, Kylie Jenner has her own reality show now, but is not easy. In Life of Kylie, she admits that she believes she would never be able to keep up with her sisters Kendall and Kim Kardashian. Kylie admits that she didn't want to be homeschooled, but that she had little choice after missing so much school due to her job. It's hard to feel normal. Prom is just a normal thing for people, but for me, I didn't get to experience that, she explains. Well, boohoo, no one cares, to be honest. I didn't get to experience that, she explains. Kylie opened up in a confessional about her struggle with fame. Kim Kardashian always said that she was made to be famous, and I respect that but it's hard to do normal things when every single person knows who you are. I don't know what it's like to live a normal life, Kylie has told her therapist. When you grow up on the camera, people think they know you. I started filming Keeping Up With The Kardashians when I was just nine years old, so I don't know what it's like to not have people know who you are. She admits she's developed a different persona for social media, and she feels like she has to maintain an image that isn't totally her. I think I've lost part of myself, she adds. I mean, personally, I don't think I'd want to be that famous either. I feel like there'd be so much pressure. I don't know. I feel like it would be nice to have the money without the fame, but I feel like Kim wants the fame. I don't know. I just think she loves it. Even Courtney admitted that she despised being famous and was tired of being followed by people on cameras. I think that would drive me nuts. Courtney has been fatigued by being a celebrity for a decade, it turns out. Except for her academic years at the University of Arizona, Kardashian has lived in LA her entire life with KUWTK and the media continuing circling, the fitness guru has publicly discussed living her life elsewhere. I always said I want to move away someday and just be away from it all, she told a paper magazine. Sail away, no one will ever see me again. I keep throwing up different places, but then I'll go there to visit and I'll be like, nope, this isn't it, but glad I came. We've just been to Finland and I was like, check, it's great for me to visit, but I'm not gonna move there. Maybe Norway, Switzerland? I've got a lot of ideas. I mean, I guess I don't blame her. At least it'd be nice to have a place to escape to for part of the year or something. Another unfortunate side effect of fame is that it puts a target on your back. Kim Kardashian was robbed at gunpoint in the apartment where she was staying on October 2nd, 2016, while visiting Paris Fashion Week. Five people masquerading as cops handcuffed and gagged her before stealing $10 million worth of valuables. The burglars gained access to her home by frightening the concierge. They held a gun to Kardashian's head, tied her wrists and legs, and wrapped duct tape around her lips as a gag once they gained entry to her room. Kardashian was uninjured when she was placed in the bathtub and is said to have begged for her life. And I definitely remember when this happened. I think she took like a huge hiatus on social media for like a year after that. She screamed for help and after wiggling her hands free from the plastic bindings around her wrists, the crooks got away. Following the incident, filming for the upcoming season of Keeping Up With The Kardashians was put on hold indefinitely, according to a statement released on October 6, 2016. And the result? Several people on the internet doubted the whole thing, citing Kim's penchant for stunts and the desire for more fame, which I guess I can see how people would think that, for sure. Following the announcement of the robbery, numerous people questioned whether it was manufactured or not, with some drawing parallels to Olympic swimmer Ryan Lochette's recent bogus robbery claim. A video was published on October 10th, 2016, showing Kardashian shortly after the robbery. As police began their investigation, she is shown in the video using the cell phone that she had reported stolen, and 
and she does not have any of the markings she claimed she received from her kidnappers, raising more suspicions about whether the events were manufactured. I'm actually not sure what to think with this. Kardashian responded by filing lawsuits against multiple media outlets the next day as well as obtaining a gag order to have the footage deleted from any articles since it was part of an ongoing police investigation. Kardashian dismissed the complaint on October 25th, 2016, leading to fresh accusations that the incident was staged to gain media attention. Variety once released a short video clip of an interview with her with a caption stating that Kim was sharing her best advice for women in business. And I feel like it's interesting and kind of funny at the same time and sad. I have the best advice for women in business. Get your ass up and work. Before adding, it seems like nobody wants to work these days. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. Um, okay, I don't know why, it just like cracked me up. It's like, okay, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, I don't think you even know, it's pretty easy to work when you have a SWAT team and glam squad doing everything for you. Kim's words trigger a barrage of criticism from readers who expressed their displeasure online just hours after their interview was released. People were quick to point out that her fast rise to billionaire status, Kim was born into a life of extreme affluence in Beverly Hills. People on Twitter claim that because Kim had a large head start in life, she couldn't be lecturing the public on what it takes to succeed, as her words indicated a lack of awareness. Yeah, Kim, like I'd like to see you work for minimum wage these days and try to like pay rent and gas. Like you wouldn't last a week, I'm sorry. That is another drawback to being famous. Every move of your life is under the magnifying glass. Every word carefully scrutinized it is no surprise that people often struggle with the expectations and weight of fame, and the Kardashians are no exception. Kim's fame hasn't all led to doom and gloom, though. There are several positive differences that one can make with so much influence, and Kim K has definitely made them. I mean, I'm no way saying that I like Kim Kardashian, but... Kardashian has worked in the field of prison reform, advocating for the ending of Chris Young's sentence, as well as that of Alice Marie Johnson, a woman who was sentenced to life in prison for a first-time drug offense as the leader of a major cocaine ring in Tennessee, which President Donald Trump granted in June 2018. She was key in encouraging President Trump to support the First Step Act, which established fundamental reforms in the U.S. prison system alongside Van Jones and Jared Kushner. Van Jones later asserted that the act would have not been passed if Kardashian had not been present because it would not have gained the president's support. It was later passed by a large majority of senators in the United States Senate. In early 2019, Kardashian contributed heavily to the 90 Days to Freedom campaign, which was founded by attorneys Brittany K. Barnett and Angel Cody with the goal of releasing a nonviolent drug convicts from life sentences. 17 people were liberated as a result of the initiative. In the media, Kim Kardashian was highly credited for the campaign's success. Her participation drew a range of reactions from admiration to claims that it was a publicity gimmick to charges that she was stealing credit for something she didn't accomplish. Barnett commented on the divisive and underfunded nature of the issue in a Facebook post from May 7th of that year. Kim linked arms with us to support us when foundations turned us down in the criminal justice reform space. He said, adding, Kim linked arms with us to support us when foundations turned us down. We and our clients and their families have a lot of love for her and are deeply grateful for her. We can see that Kim Kardashian rose to fame through a series of fortunate events and while it has made her and her family immensely rich and influential, it has also created a lot of problems for them. I think these are all like first world problems. A lot of the people have grown to despise the fame that they used to enjoy. The whole case paints a very interesting picture about the two sides of being famous and the Kardashians won't be the last of many to be famous for just simply being famous. And if you think about it, the Kardashians need to be in the eye. They have their television show. They want to be famous because they make money off it. If they don't keep this stuff going, they won't have any money. So she has to keep up with her lifestyle. So she can't really retreat because then everything will come crumbling down. And what do you guys think of fame? Would you want to be famous or would you rather just kind of ha have the money but not be famous? 
What are your thoughts on the Kardashians? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to check out some of my other videos. Check out Kim K's Maryland dress video, which is quite interesting if you want to know why she wore it and the history behind a Marilyn Monroe's JFK dress. All right, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!